Alright, who is ready for another episode of Mugo's Corner? I mean, y'all liked the first one. I can tell if it was just that you liked the corner or you liked the Lego or what, but I'm gonna interpret it as you want more of this, so we doing it. Hey everyone, how's it going? My name's Miyuko and welcome back to my channel where we talk about tech, career, and life. So today, I thought it would be kind of cool to talk about my career thus far by talking about some of like the most pivotal moments that got me to be where I am today. I mean, I don't know about you, but I love thinking about like, okay, how did I get here? Well, that happened because I met this person, I met that person because I met this person, and I met this person because I liked this thing, blah, 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 like, and so on and so forth. I think it's fun to kind of like chase down that rabbit hole and to really think about like, what are the really pivotal moments that have really led me to where I am today? I mean, I just think it's super cool to like think about. It just makes me think how random the universe is and just how a lot of things happen because of a million random independent events. Of course, they're not always independent and there is a lot of, is it will or is it fate is like a kind of debate, I guess that could be mixed into here. But yeah, today we're gonna talk about my life, not technical stuff, not software engineering stuff, but career and life oriented. I know last time while I talked, we built some Legos because it was about personal projects. If you missed it, check it out up here. But today, because we're talking about the intricate web of happenings around the world and in everyone's individual lives that lead to certain events, I thought it would be cool if we did some crafting. In the last like couple of months, ever since I probably moved, I've just been much more into crafting and it's just really satisfying to be able to make something with your two hands that is just actually like physical and tangible. So I thought we'd make like a super duper simple macrame plant hanger because I've been making a ton. Like I used most of this already and why not? You know, you'll still get the content. You'll get a little bit of how to entertainment. And if not, just stay and subscribe for my quirky personality. Okay, so this video is honestly probably gonna be pretty windy and sort of all over the place. I will leave timestamps down below to lead you to any sort of structure of a video if you'd like to skip to any parts. And also before I start, I just wanted to acknowledge that yes, while a lot of these events have led to really specific things happening, uh, that's not the full story. These are not the only reasons why I've had the career that I've had. There's gonna be a lot of like behind the scenes things that I'm not able to like put a figure on on how I was able to get to whatever step and I just wanted to, to acknowledge that like idiosyncrasy make it like not feel like a how-to of like these are the steps that if you follow exactly you'll have the same results because you probably won't and that's just life because everyone's different and walks their own path so it starts with tennis um, my parents are both tennis players my mom played high school tennis and then my dad started playing playing tennis once we moved to California. Even before my parents' generation, my grandfather and my grandmother uh, were avid tennis players in their university. I really think that's where the story starts, as crazy as it is and as it might sound, but that is kind of the, the beginning to my career, actually. Oh, and by the way, all of the people that I mentioned in this video were gonna be like nicknamed and named different things uh, to protect their privacy. Um, and also because I haven't talked to them in like a super long time and it'd be awkward if all of a sudden I was like yo hey remember how you like changed my life because my parents played tennis I also played tennis uh, I kind of think that the whole tennis thing was something that my dad really wanted to do with me and my brother so I played tennis in high school I joined the junior varsity team in high school and it was through tennis that I met my friend Tom Tom was like a year older than me and he was also another Asian kid at my school and we both played tennis and we ended up just kind of having a, the same circle of friends. And it was through my friend Tom that I met my friend Joe. And I met him because Tom invited him to one of our many like friend hangouts. Funny story, I actually like ended up dating him for a little bit in high school. Will I finish this within one video? Honestly, probably not. But I will make good progress and that's all that counts. Cause you know, also like the whole weaving of life and the threads of life are not complete ever. So, you know, maybe I'll leave this in an incomplete state because that's just what life is like. 
So yeah, because I played tennis and I met my friend Tom, I met my friend Joe, and then it was through my friend Joe who I met my friend Fred. Now Fred went to the same high school as Joe and he was Japanese. I didn't really have very many Japanese friends growing up. He was also a year older than me. So I was like, cool, Japanese friend. And it also turns out that where his family's from in Japan was pretty close to mine. So we shared the same dialect and liked a lot of the same TV shows and comedy. So this was around like junior and senior year of high school. So for those of you not in America, this is like the last two years of high school before college. And Fred was a year older than I was, and so he was in college, and it turned out that he went to UCSD. And in my senior year, I had decided to go to UCSD, and so it was nice that I was friends with someone who was already there. And so when I got to UCSD, I immediately joined the Japanese Student Association, which was a student organization that he was a part of. I was also just really excited to hang out with like other Japanese people because I just like never really had Japanese friends to begin with. And kind of a parallel story to this, while I was at UCSD, I was living in the dorms for my first year and it just so happened that my floor mate, we'll call him Kelvin, was the one that recommended that I try computer science. So yeah, another like if I hadn't lived in the dorms on that floor with my friend Calvin, may never have found computer science. Or maybe I would have, who really knows? So yeah, I was starting computer science. I was part of this thing called Japanese Student Association. And through JSA, I met my friend Eduardo. Eduardo was part of JSA, but he was also part of a engineering student organization. So in my second year, because of all the stuff that I had heard from him about how good it was to join the org, I was like, sure, yeah, I already know him. I will probably like everybody else, so let's join it. So that's how I joined this organization. It's actually called Theta Ta. It's actually a fraternity. Yes, I was in a fraternity in college, but it was co-ed. And I had a lot of fun being in that student org. Granted, everyone was an engineering student, so everyone was stressed out all the time. But it was nice that we always had study buddies and someone would always be in the labs to go hang out with and study with. Also, this is turning out pretty good so far. Check that out, right? Things are starting to weave together. Things are starting to become a thing. I think at this point, actually, I want to add a little bead. Because you know what? Maybe it's like a turning point in the story. And really, you are the writer of your own story and journey. So, because I'm the writer and storyteller of this beautiful macrame project, I'm gonna do it, you know? That's what I feel like doing, and I'm gonna do it. Which is really how many life decisions, rituals, and things get made when you just say, you know what, just gonna do it because it feels right. And your gut is usually not wrong. There are times where it can betray you and that sucks, but I found that listening to your gut instinct has been, you know, generally good. So long as that I, it's actually like an instinct that I wanna trust. It's been pretty good. By the way, if you also wanna learn how to make your own macrame plant hanger, or maybe you wanna learn how to cook, or you wanna learn how to code something, or design, or draw, or illustrate, or really anything at all, then make sure to check out today's sponsor, Skillshare. Skillshare is an online learning community for lifelong learners, creatives, and curious people. The classes include a combination of video lessons and a class project, and they all fit to your schedule and skill level. For less than $10 a month with an annual subscription, it's curated specifically for learning, so there's no ads, and they're always launching new premium classes. I know that a lot of y'all are like coding types, but macrame is actually very fun to make. So I really recommend the macrame plant hanger DIY class. I'll link it in the description description box down below, but there's also so many other classes to take from on Skillshare. And for those of you who don't care to make macrame, but you want to learn some really good technical skills, then there's a really popular class on Skillshare called the JavaScript Toolkit, Write Cleaner, Faster, and Better Code. So the first 1,000 people to use the link in the description box down below will get a free trial of the Skillshare Premium Membership. This is an awesome opportunity to learn something new right before the year ends, and so make sure to check it out. And thank you, Skillshare, for sponsoring. Okay, so where was I? I had joined Data Ta, I had met my friend Eduardo. So it was through Data Ta that I had also met my friend Steven. Steven was two years older than me. He was also computer science. And so he gave me a lot of advice for like how to move forward in the industry and how to get a job. And it just so happened that Steven had had an internship at Intuit and he had a returning offer. And so he was gonna go work there full time. 
which was really cool because when it came time for me to probably look for an internship in my junior year, then I called on him because he was already working and had graduated at the time. And I was like, yo, can you help me get a job at Intuit? And he was like, yeah, I got you. I'll give you a referral, which is how I got my internship at Intuit. So like you'll notice so far that just like my career until that point had really just been a lot of like bouncing around, meeting lots of different people. And it just so happens that a few key people uh, were really important for me to have met because it translated to them showing me the way and opening the door to opportunities that I had had, which I'm so grateful that I have met them and that I became friends with them and they helped me through all of this, which is kind of a big reason why I wanted to make this YouTube channel because I wanted to hopefully do a similar thing for you all. I'm gonna add some yarn and make it a little bit fall rusticy. Just try to make it work. Here we go, we can do this, we can do this, we can do this, Mango. You can code, you can make some DIY things too, okay? I believe in you. Do I regret doing this a little bit? Yeah, just like how at many times I completely regretted choosing computer science as my degree when I was in college. But I just kept going with it because I was like, you know, I'm more than halfway done already. I've seen the worst of it. I hadn't. And let's just see what happens if I keep going. And it might turn out to be something really cool in the end, which it has. Sure, that looks decent. It's a little bit imperfect, but you know what? Everything in life is a little bit imperfect. And it's okay to live with those imperfections sometimes because that's what makes it feel a little bit more human and makes you feel like you are alive. That's the pattern that I'm gonna go with for all of these, I think. Okay, what was I talking about? So yeah, I had gotten my internship at Intuit successfully thanks to my friend Steven. And then, so because I had an internship at Intuit, I then had a returning offer to Intuit for a full-time role. So yeah, I worked at Intuit for a year and a half. In the middle of it, after a year, I knew that I wanted to move up to the Bay Area. So I did through an internal transfer at Intuit, which wasn't so hard because I was part of a rotational program anyways. And so that's how I made it all the way up to Silicon Valley, to the Bay Area. But what I didn't know at the time is that I would be at that job for six months because I didn't really particularly enjoy it. And then I would move on to my next role. And that, as a lot of you know, is Patreon. And Patreon, like, I wish I could say there was like this, like, oh my goodness, there's this person that introduced me to Patreon, blah, 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 blah. Like there isn't like another part of my story is AngelList. I was like just on my laptop one day perusing all the different job listings and just kind of being like, what else is out there for a young iOS dev like me? And then I had found the Patreon listing at the very top of the list. And I feel like it struck me with lightning where I was just like, I gotta do this job. And a lot of things had built up to that, obviously. Like another part of the story, which I'll get into in a bit, is how I started YouTube and what are all the things that happened there. But I think why I started YouTube and why I started working at Patreon share a very similar storyline in that I I just watched a lot of YouTube in high school and college and I just was a YouTube fiend. And while I was in college, I specifically knew that creators like Keen Granis and Destin from Smarter Every Day and many other creators I had looked up to were using Patreon. So it was a familiar name to me and because I wanted to work on something that I was you know, passionate about that I'd be really excited by, I decided to apply there. And interestingly, actually, I didn't hear back from Patreon for like an entire two months. And so between the time that I applied to when I got a response back, I had actually interviewed with several other companies. I had gotten offers from them and I had signed one already, but I still was like, I just wanna see if Patreon will take me basically. I, I don't know if I'll, I'm even qualified for the job. I just wanna see if this is this could be a thing. So I emailed Patreon and I was like, yo, I applied to your thing a couple months ago. Like I have an offer already. I just wanna like see if you'd still be down if this whole thing could work. And luckily one of the recruiters reached out to me, thank goodness, uh, we did the whole interview and I had to make a really tough decision of reneging, 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 re this word. I had to go back on the offer that I had accepted because in my heart, I knew that what I really wanted to do was work at Patreon. So yeah, then I worked at Patreon. Uh, I worked there for two and a half years, as many of you know. 
And then while I was at Patreon, I think it was like after a year of working there, I went to VidCon. And a lot of y'all know this part of the story because I've shared it a lot, but VidCon was like where it all started for me in terms of YouTube because I had gone originally to gain empathy for creators, but then when I left, I just had all this insight about basically how to be a creator. And also Patreon was how I met Jarvis. And we basically were just like, dude, let's just build YouTube channels together. And so we started building our channels around the same time. And that was, that was a really fun, fun time. And I, I think Jarvis is also a really important part of this journey because he just helped me through a lot of stuff. We were figuring it out together and it was fun. I just remember the first day that he got his camera cause we were like, oh my gosh, are we actually doing this? Like, are we actually gonna like have the full setup and like make videos? And now look at us, like we're both doing it. So yeah, put a pin on the whole YouTube journey for a little bit. Yeah, I worked at Patreon for two and a half years, um, had a super fun time working there, but there was a point where I was like, I gotta go. Like this is, this is the end of the road for me. And so it was around that time that I was starting to think about leaving that I just so happened to get an email in my inbox that was an invitation for an event at Netflix. And that invitation came from, let's call her Jocelyn, uh, who would later on become my manager at Netflix. Her and other managers were hosting this women in UI engineering event at Netflix HQ. And I was like, sure, I know that Netflix events are really good because I had gone to a couple at that point. And so I went and that's where I met Jocelyn. And I remember when I met her, cause I was just like, I'm not really, you know, seriously thinking about leaving just yet, but just in case I do think of doing that, like, are you hiring? And she was like, yes, we are. We had already made contact. She knew who I was, I knew who she was. And it was just a matter of being like, yeah, I'd like to do the interview and passing along my resume and a cover letter and stuff. And luckily they liked me. I did well in the interview. And so I got that job. And so while I was there, I definitely thought a lot about like, what do I wanna do next? I actually had conversations with Jocelyn about this. And so eventually I realized that I want to not work in tech for a little bit and take a break. And so that's what I did, as you all know. Uh, I didn't really know that I was gonna like become a full-time content creator just yet, but I did know that I didn't wanna work as a software engineer. Okay, we're gonna embark upon this journey again in which Mugo tries to be crafty. Thread number two done so yeah that's kind of the story of my career which can be told through its pivotal moments which leads all the way back to my parents playing tennis which is like history is weird and it's so fascinating at the same time now i'm doing full-time content creation and i don't know that there's any one point in which i was like this is what i meant to do if anything it's been a very slow like i don't know if i want to do this because it's super scary and I don't know what I'm doing whatsoever, but it is something that I want. So I'm gonna try and make slow and steady progress towards it. But I will say that a day in the life of a software engineer, my very, very first video did kind of make a big difference, I think. And I know a lot of y'all watching that video, like that was like the first video of mine that you watched because the algorithm recommended it. And the fact that it has millions of views is still absolutely mind boggling. Oh, and then I guess a note on that video, I decided to make that video both because of right after I had been to VidCon and I was like, I wanna make a video. But I also attribute that to like the hours and hours of Ghibli movies that I grew up with. Like I just really like slice of life content. And I remember that when I was making that video, that's exactly the kind of thing that I wanted to make, which is why I don't talk in that video, which is why there's little word bubbles and stuff. It's very chill, relaxing, easy music, which the music, has stuck around because I love lo-fi and chill hop stuff. It's kind of crazy that life turns out that way. I mean, I think really the moral of the story here is that you never know what's gonna happen. The people that you meet, the jobs that you get, the opportunities that show up, the opportunities that you accept, that you reject, all of these things amount to hopefully a beautiful and glorious and full and rich life. And if not, it's working towards one. And so in the context of like career, software engineering, anything at all, if there is an opportunity to try something and you are at least a little bit interested, then go for it because you never ever know what's gonna happen. It might, you know, two or three steps ahead of that help you meet the love of your life. Or maybe it'll help you achieve a goal of yours that you've had for your entire life. You never know. And I think that's the kind of like optimism and hope that I try to have 
especially this year because it's really hard to. You never know what the future is going to hold. I think if we look at past history, a lot of bad has happened, but also a lot of good things have happened too as a result of many tiny individual accidents really. And of course, in between all of the events is a lot of hard work, crying, figuring out what your life is supposed to mean and not knowing what the heck you're supposed to do. Even in the face of something super terrible, everything will be okay. And life is never complete. You're never gonna get that like, I'm done. I've achieved everything in life because there's always more. I think that's kind of the beauty of life really. Because as you weave each strand into your life and it just piles up to become something super beautiful and nice, it'll create a really nice end product. Am I trying too hard for an analogy? Because I'm trying pretty hard right now. I'm not done with this at all because this takes like hours to make, but I did make some pretty good progress. But I will show you the done state right here. See, it's so pretty. I finished it after I filmed the video and now it's beautiful. Probably hanging with the plant, living its best life. So yeah, thank you all for being here and coming to another edition of Muko's Corner. If you have any other topics you'd like for me to cover, then leave them in the comments down below, preferably with an activity I can do that with. <laughs> because I like adding like an element of DIY or making something here while I talk to you all. Make sure to hit that subscribe button and I will see you next time. Bye.